So, a couple of weeks ago, I made a video about the greatest people in history, as determined by a series of TV contests that were held in countries around the world in the early 2000s. The American version of this was a show called Greatest Americans, and it aired on the Discovery Channel in the year 2005. The way it worked is that the show did a survey of the American public, in which they were asked to name the greatest American who had ever lived, and then they revealed the top 100 most popular choices. They then had a second round of voting to re-rank the top 10, and spoiler alert, Ronald Reagan won. Anyway, today I thought we would dive a little bit deeper into the results of this 15-year-old survey, which, despite being 15 years old, is still one of the most comprehensive efforts to document the greatest Americans that has ever been done. So let us take a closer look at the sort of people who made it into the top 100. How has our definition of what is a great American changed over the last decade and a half? Who did we think was great back then that we maybe think is not so great now? And who were some of the most obscure or dated choices that made it in. So let us get into it. So, the top 10 went like this. Ronald Reagan in first place, Abraham Lincoln in second, Martin Luther King Jr. in third, George Washington in fourth, and Ben Franklin in fifth. So far, relatively uncontroversial, right? Well, except for maybe Reagan being in first place. As I said in my first video, at the time that this survey was done, Reagan had only died a year earlier, which was treated as this very big deal and sort of resulted in an outpouring of Reagan nostalgia across America. All Millard Fillmore schools are now Ronald Reagan's. The Mississippi River is now the Mississippi Reagan. And my good friend Frankenstein is now Franken Reagan. But on the other hand, Reagan was also very popular, even in his own time. And he is still, to this day, ranked very highly when Americans or American historians are asked to name the greatest ever presidents. More controversial, however, was George W. Bush being in sixth place, who was the current president of the United States at the time. Bush today is, I feel, not regarded all that well, even among fellow Republicans. But in 2005, he had just been re-elected less than a year ago, and partisan politics being what it is, a lot of Republicans were still very fiercely loyal to him. This is an important thing to keep in mind these days, when people sometimes freak out about how popular Donald Trump is with Republicans. The fact is, all presidents tend to be very popular with partisans of their own side, and it can take a while for these feelings to melt away. Case in point, greatest American number seven, Bill Clinton, who at that time was the most recent Democrat president. After Clinton came Elvis and then Oprah, who I don't think it is a stretch to say are two of the biggest American celebrities of all time. You can tell because they only need a first name. Then in 10th place, we have Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the Democratic president associated with getting America out of the Great Depression and leading the country through World War II. All right, so that was the top 10, but now let us talk about the rest of the top 25, which in some ways I think was actually less controversial. It's in numbers 11 through 25 that you get some of the real cliched famous Americans, including Thomas Jefferson, Walt Disney, JFK, Thomas Edison, Muhammad Ali, Rosa Parks, the Wright brothers, and Neil Armstrong. There are maybe a couple of controversial picks, however. Number 11, for instance, was the preacher Billy Graham. Graham is considered a leading figure in the American evangelical Christian revival of the 1960s onward. It is a movement that has had tremendous impact in American culture and politics, and is actually something I am working on a whole other video about. But that being said, while the evangelical Christian movement is a controversial thing in modern America, and always has been, Billy Graham has long had a reputation as like the one evangelical everyone could agree on. He was a spiritual advisor to presidents of both parties, and particularly as he got older, he sort of earned a reputation as being a much friendlier, milder, more moderate, less ideological, and less combative figure than evangelical preachers often have a reputation for being. Number 20, meanwhile, was Lance Armstrong. Now this is a good example of a choice that has not aged well. Lance Armstrong was of course an extremely successful professional cyclist 
who won the Tour de France a record seven times between 1999 and 2005. During the early 2000s, he was undeniably one of the most beloved Americans of his time, not just for his athletic prowess, but also for his very brave and high-profile battle with testicular cancer. If you lived through that time, I'm sure you very much remember his whole live strong anti-cancer fundraising movement. Now, there had long been rumors, particularly in the French media, that Armstrong was using performance-enhancing drugs, but these charges were easily dismissed as just the French being salty that an American was better at their thing than they were. There was a lot of anti-French sentiment in the U.S. in those days. But then, in 2012, a bombshell investigation by the United States Anti-Doping Agency revealed that Armstrong had, in fact, been using performance-enhancing drugs, and Lance himself eventually confessed everything to Greatest American number nine. Did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. In your opinion, was it humanly possible to win the Tour de France without doping? Seven times in a row. Not in my opinion. So he was stripped of all of his awards and prestige and is now probably one of the greatest disgraced Americans of all time. Henry Ford is also on the list in 24th place. He is of course best known as the inventor of the modern automobile and the founder of the Ford Motor Company. But he also has a fairly dark reputation these days because of how anti-Semitic he was. So he's certainly someone who's a little dodgy to like too openly. It is in the list of the final 75 greatest Americans that we really start to find some odd choices, however. For whatever reason, the Discovery Channel never released the rank order of the final 75. So all we have is a giant pile of names of famous Americans who are like, broadly popular, but not exactly top tier in terms of greatness. So the biggest subcategory of people in the bottom 75 is basically what we could just call showbiz people. People like Tom Hanks, Steven Spielberg, Katherine Hepburn, Clint Eastwood, John Wayne, George Lucas, Marilyn Monroe. Basically all of the most iconic Hollywood big shots. A couple of now disgraced people are in here too, of course, like convicted sex criminal Bill Cosby and noted anti-Semitic lunatic Mel Gibson. But but back in 2005, people were still in a lot of denial about all of this. The most interesting minor Hollywood person of the time who made it into the bottom 75 is probably Ellen DeGeneres. In 2005, Ellen had basically just started her talk show. So this is a rare example of a pick that has actually aged well, since I would say Ellen has only become more famous and more beloved over the last 15 years. I could easily see her making it into the top 25 if they did this poll today. There are a lot fewer musicians than you might expect. Only Frank Sinatra, Ray Charles, Madonna, and Michael Jackson. Can you think of some notable American musicians who are missing? Let me know in the comments. After entertainment people, the next largest category is politicians, which is mostly just like every president of the last hundred years. Three first ladies made it in as well. Eleanor Roosevelt, who is often considered to have been the greatest first lady of all time, made it into the top 25, in case you were wondering. But once you get beyond the presidents, basically every politician in the bottom 75 are terribly myopic choices that have not aged well at all. So for example, we have Colin Powell and Condoleezza Rice, the two secretaries of state in the George W. Bush administration. Both were the highest ranking African Americans in the history of the US government up to that point. But today, both are probably better known for their close association with the planning of the 2003 US invasion of Iraq. That war was still relatively popular circa 2005, but today it is not something that anyone really wants to take credit for. Former Senator John Edwards, who was Democrat John Kerry's vice presidential nominee in the 2004 presidential election, somehow made it in as well. John Kerry himself, however, did not. At the time, John Edwards was seen as this dynamic, young up-and-comer in the Democratic Party. But then, in 2011, he became horribly disgraced when it was revealed that he had been using campaign funds to cover up an affair he was having while his wife was dying of cancer. He ultimately got off on criminal charges, but I don't think anyone knows or cares what he's up to these days. Rudy Giuliani also made it in. He was mayor of New York City during 9-11. 
and was a heroic symbol of American resilience for many years after. But you know, these days he is probably better known for being the most high-profile member of President Trump's legal defense team and his, shall we say, less than eloquent TV performances. Shut up, no, Shut up. Shut up. Okay. But there were some fairly prescient political inclusions as well, such as a certain recently elected junior senator from Illinois, or a certain New York businessman who had recently started his own reality show. But once you get beyond the politicians, most of the remaining picks are relatively uncontroversial. So you got George Washington Carver, Amelia Earhart, John Glenn, Steve Jobs, Michael Jordan, Malcolm X, Brett. Favre? I wish I knew more about football. Is he still considered a big deal? Tom Brady isn't on the list, and I feel that would never ever happen today. Joseph Smith, the founder of Mormonism, made it on, I assume because a lot of Mormons voted for him. I feel like his reputation among non-Mormons isn't very high, however. He's probably more likely to be known as a serial polygamist as anything else. So here are two people on the list that I was not super familiar with, but you can see if you recognize their names. Audie Murphy? and Chuck Yeager. So, Audie Murphy, I have learned, was a heroic American soldier from World War II, famous for winning basically all of the medals, as you can see in this photo. According to the New York Times, his daring exploits seem almost like a video game caricature. He is said to have killed more than 200 Nazis. For this, Murphy became one of the most famous men in America immediately after the war. For a while, he tried to be a movie star, but he never achieved much success in that realm. Then in 1971, he abruptly died in a plane crash. The impression I get is that Audie Murphy was a very iconic figure for a certain older generation of American, and then when that generation lost its cultural influence, Murphy sort of faded from the national imagination. I mean, I have collected a lot of books about famous 20th century Americans over the years, and I could not find a single reference to Audie Murphy in any of them. But I guess a lot of old folks watch the Discovery Channel. Chuck Yeager, meanwhile, is a much more famous guy, although his fame is also very tied up in one particular generational moment. Yeager was a fighter pilot during World War II, and in 1947, he test flew a new rocket-powered jet known as the X-1 at an unprecedented speed of over 700 miles per hour, faster than the speed of sound. This flight marks the first milestone in the supersonic chapter in the history of aviation. And you were there. Chuck Yeager is actually still alive, although he is getting close to 100 at this point. For the last few decades, he's been this sort of good-natured guy who gives speeches and interviews and things about the historic moment that he was part of. The good-natured former pilot who was part of some historic moment is a kind of fun type of American celebrity, don't you think? All right, now let us talk about the person who I consider to be the most obscure in the top 100. The name that I would say makes the whole list feel the most dated. Patrick Tillman. Has anyone under 30 ever heard of Pat Tillman? He was a professional football player from the Arizona Cardinals who famously quit the NFL to volunteer for the US Army after 9-11. And then he was killed in Afghanistan in 2004, and for a brief period, he was really held up as a symbol of patriotic sacrifice in the post-9-11 era. Today, however, we know that Tillman died because he was accidentally shot to death by fellow US soldiers in this very tragic and confused confrontation in which he was mistaken for the enemy, which was a much less grand story than what the military had originally put out, which is that he had been shot by the Taliban while storming up a hill with a machine gun to defend his fellow men below. Once the truth came out, a lot of people felt very deceived by the way that the military had initially propagandized his death, and there were congressional hearings about it and everything. The full scandal of the Pat Tillman tragedy was only really starting to become mainstream knowledge around the time that the greatest American TV competition was happening, which is why his inclusion in this list feels very dark in retrospect. Anyway, let me try to lighten the mood a bit with a closing assignment for you all. Imagine that the Discovery Channel did a survey like this today. What person who has only become famous in the last few years do you think would have a justifiable place on a list of the top 100 greatest Americans? In other words, what relatively new celebrity do you think will only become more famous and more appreciated over the next 
15 years? Who is the Ellen or Barack Obama of this moment? And secondly, who is the John Edwards or Pat Tillman of this moment? That is, who do you think would get voted into the top 100 Americans if the survey was held today, but would seem like a really dated or embarrassing choice like 15 years later? I am really keen to hear your ideas. If I had to do this myself, I would say that maybe I could see Mike Pence making it into a list of the top 100 greatest Americans, even though I cannot imagine that he is gonna wind up as a politician with much of a long-term legacy. But then on the other hand, I could also imagine a lot of Americans voting for Kanye, and I think he is probably going to be remembered as a major American cultural figure for a long time to come. Anyway, let me know your picks in the thing below. And if you want to see the full list of the top 100 Americans of 2005, I have a link in the thing below as well. See you all next week.